Hey Pancakers, today we are here with another trailer video. Um, this time we're going to be fishing. So you want different types of bait, any bait works. So I'm just going to grab basically all of my bait. Um, it's in this chest, it is in this chest. We have stink bugs. You do not want to use the ladybugs because that will actually lower your luck, which is not useful. It was actually the uh, opposite of useful. I do think I just grabbed all of the bait from the chest. I do see a firefly up here, so I am going to grab that really quickly. And so how this works is it will look at this one. If this is not, we'll look through your ammo slots and then it will go top to bottom. And if any of those are baits, it will use it from top to bottom. And then we'll look at your inventory and we'll go from the top row, from the left side to the right side. Left side to the right side and keep keep, keep going down until it reaches the end of your inventory. Um, that would be how it works for any consumable item, by the way. Besides for quick using uh, potions. Quick using potions makes it so... You need to just, it will just use like the highest healing potion. Next thing you want to do is you want to grab a rod. I have this wooden one, though I do believe I can make a lead one. I can make a lead one. Lead uh, ones are just better than wooden ones, so I will put this wooden one away. Make a lead one. Make, make a lead one. And lead ones are significantly better than wooden ones. Just put this down here. Go find the reinforced rod. And this gives you an extra 10% fishing power from the uh, wood one. Might not seem like a lot. But it's quite a bit. And then we have a fishing spot down here. You want your fishing spot to be nice and big. I'll convert this place later in the game when I can actually mine better to look so it can look fancy. Maybe I'll even add some things down here to make that maybe a different type of fishing spot or something. Though it does need to be a bit farther away. Um, and yeah. So I will be, how you fish is you basically just throw this in the water. I see the thing right here is a little barber and wait and then wait. Uh, goes down like you saw it do there. I'll do it again. Like that. You want to pull on it and it will give you a fish, but it can also give you crates. The thing you should probably be looking for are crates. And I shall fish until I run out of uh, bait. And I will see you after that. See you then. Okay, Pancakers, welcome back for a sec. I'm not done fishing. I might end fishing before I'm actually done with uh, all of the bait because there is a random chance to not lose bait. I think it's like a 50%, something like that. Either way, uh, there's a cement mister which is increases wall placement speed. You can get that if you want. But the bigger thing I'm looking at is the mystic robe. Uh, you can get this from the wandering trader. It reduces magic damage and it increases the critical strike chance. Uh, it increases magic damage and crit chance and it also reduces mana cost of magic so as a magic armor. And it looks like this. Um, now theoretically you could get other magic stuff to go with this and I'll probably show this off and use this for the boss. Um, but yeah, and now since we have something like this, I do want to show you one last thing, which is if we get two lenses, since we already have a ton of lenses, we can go over to a workbench, 
we can go to this and grab that. Uh, there's also a stink bug block that stops um, villagers from moving into a home if you place it in there. Not super useful, but if you put this on it, it allows you to see your face again. Which is really nice, especially if you want to have something like this. Now I will put this in the chest and go back to fishing and I will see you afterwards. Okay, Pancakers, welcome back. Um, I didn't use up all of my worms just because I want a worm here. Uh, but I got a ton of stuff. I got 74 bass. And you can actually turn bass into potions. We also got bomb fish. Bomb fish I used to make bombs. Not make bombs, but our bombs, basically. Um, they work as sticky bombs, and that's about it. You can sell bass. I'd recommend keeping a fair few of them. And selling the rest, I would just sell the rest to this person. And it sells two gold, which is really nice. Crates can also contain um, money. But now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab some lead. I'm going to grab some wood. And I already made a cooking pot, got it. <laughs> so in the cooking pot you can make cook fish. Which you can use to get, get mining improvements to all your stats for 8 minutes. You can also use like cherries and plums and the other items like that. Plums, uh, fried eggs, they'll fried at it's a medium improvements for fried eggs but you get from spiders. Setting up a spider farm uh, is something we will do later on, but it's not a bad idea to uh, just go grind some if you really want to. Uh, ice cream you also just get from enemies I believe in the snow biome, but cooked fish is one of the most reliable ways to do it. I also see a stink bug up here, so I will catch that and then deposit it. Okay, and since we've opened all of these, we got some lesser mana potions. Copper or apprentice bait master, not master bait. Oh, uh, there's apprentice, journeyman, and master bait. And master bait's the best one. Journeyman's the medium one. Master bait's also blue. We also got sailfish boots. Uh, I'm just going to deposit all of these into our chest. I'll actually keep uh, lesser mana potions on me. And I'll keep the journeyman bait on me. Positing all of those into a chest. Lesser mana potions are something you want to buy if you're magic and you're going to be going into the boss. Uh, but the next thing is I accidentally deposited the sailfish boots. That's the next thing. Uh, this is a type of Hermes boots. And I'd recommend getting rid of the white string if you want... Um, I could also get rid of the shackle, but I think the plus 2% damage will be slightly better. Actually, does that even affect my damage? It doesn't. I will use the spiked shackle then. Not spiked shackle, the guarding white string then. Put this away. And then we're going to get ready for the boss this for the rest of this episode. And then... Uh, next episode, we shall fight the boss. You can also just grab random crate features and sell them. Like, I can sell this bunny. Deposit all of that. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare with, for the, with the melee stuff. Then I shall prepare for, with the magic stuff. Oh, no. Melee, then the ranged then the magic, then the summoner. So melee, you're going to want your enchanted boomerang or a higher class boomerang. That's good too. 
uh, you can be using a flaming mace if you were lucky enough to get a mace at the start. Those do decently high damage. Um, but then you could also use a sword like a... Um, like the bone sword, zombie arm, or ice blade. You could also probably use like a golden broadsword or something like that. Uh, the ice blade would probably be one of the best ones to get. If you happened upon a enchanted sword, that's going to be better than the ice blade. And if you decide to go get Staffy, that's also going to be better. Staffies are on uh, Sky Islands. You'll probably do Sky Islands after, probably after the eye. Sometime then. Okay, and then for armor, you want something like tungsten, platinum, gold, silver, something along those lines. You could also use lead or iron armor. Uh, you want some form of increased movement. I'd recommend having sailfish boots, semis boots, anything like that. I'd recommend having a, some form of double jump in the uh, feeding blizzard in a bottle. And I'd recommend having all of your accessories kitted out, even if they aren't that good. So even if it's like guarding white string or hard ice skates, I'd recommend having them still. We do have a quick shock tooth necklace, which will help with movement speed and damage. Shock tooth necklace are gotten from a blood moon enemy in the blood zombie. I don't really expect you to have one by this point, but all of the classes benefit from them. And then you could also use a, yo a wooden yo-yo. If you really wanted to, I would not recommend it. If you don't have a boomerang or any other ranged options, use a yo-yo. But you're gonna want something that can do ranged, and you want some, and you most likely want something for crowd playing that you don't need it for your melee class. Then for your magic, for your ranged class, you're gonna want a bow. Uh, you could use a snowball cannon. You can also use grenades. Grenades are probably one of the best ones to use against it. And then also you're going to want, there's so many fallen stars here. Just running in each direction trying to get some fallen stars. We're at the jungle, which is a place we don't want to be. And if we just go back this way, um, it should be fine. I'm just going to pause all of these. So yeah, for range you want probably a golden bow. Uh, grenades will be the best thing to use. You could also use shurikens, throwing knives. And you can also use the snowball cannon if you manage to get a snowball cannon. That's an enchanted nightcrawler. Uh, you can just randomly find those. That does mean it's a uh, Fallen Starry Knight. On Fallen Starry Knights, I'd recommend just running around getting as many stars as possible. Just because of how useful, star that how useful stars are throughout the game. And just how many you're going to need. Running across the roof, going back down to try to get a star if there's one. Having an enchanted Nightcrawler is nice. I don't think we're going to find another one, and the crimson's right here, so I'm going to immediately start. I do see there's a star, a couple of stars here, so I'm going to run inside of it to grab the stars. I actually see the desert biomes right here, uh, but we shouldn't go into it. I'm just going to teleport out. If you see something in there that you can quickly grab, you can go and quickly try to grab it. Otherwise, I'd not recommend going inside of it at this stage of the game. One thing you want to make sure you have is rubies uh, when we're preparing for the boss um, because you need to use rubies to summon the boss. If there's a star like up there you can also quickly check and see. That zombie decided to jump. Yeah I'm just trying to get as many fallen stars as possible. But yeah for range you want probably your best bet's grenades. It's one of the best items for this point in time. Uh, it does crowd clearing. Just stuff like that. For your magic weapons, you're gonna... 
want oh by the way there's a traveling merchant the traveling merchant sells melee and magic armors you can use those you do not need those or other if you aren't using those I'd recommend basically the same armor set for every class though which is like snow lead so on Okay, so for magic, you're probably just going to have something like an emerald staff. Though you do have a wand of frosting. Fro frosting, yeah. Uh, the wand... Hmm. I think it is frosting, actually. The wand of frosting. Uh, you can use that too. And should between your two weapons. You also might want the magic thing. And you're also going to want mana potions. Quickly, I'm going to make sure I have the gems to do this. I see that I don't, so I'm going to go back underground and search around to try to find it after I explain what else you need or you should get. Grab yourself some silk, grab yourself your Frank's fur, and then grab yourself your gold. Make sure you have one gold in the chest, you're also going to need gold for the King Slime Summon. I'm going to make four so I can show you how to fight the boss with each one. You're also going to want basically the same accessories for each um, class, by the way, at this point in the game. And then the first thing you want is the Flinx uh, Staff. After you want do that, you do want the Flinx for a coat. I see I, cannot, I don't have enough stuff to make it. But the Flinx will just summon the Flinx, which will fight for you. If we go over here, you can talk to the guy to help with crafting. Just go in here. And it needs 8 Flinx fur. So, uh, we're going to try to get 8 Flinx fur along with other things. I'm going to go into the snow cave so we can hopefully get Flinx fur and some other stuff down there. And uh, we'll probably do this in a speed up. Um, if you aren't needing any of the required stuff, just probably skip for the final preparation, and I will see you then. Otherwise, just watch the speed up portion. Okay, Pancakers, welcome back. The first thing I want to say is we found this dude. Uh, talk to him. He sells stuff. And the most important thing you want if you're a magic user, no, magic user, melee user, is the red counter, right? This is for yo-yos, and I will be putting it on my thing. I will not be using it this time. This dude's decently rare, and I'll assume you will have found one after a bit. But at the same time, um, it's not guaranteed. I'm also still getting silk and silk and things like that. The one thing you want to do if you want to just get done with this faster is place a bomb, run from the bomb, explode the bomb. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was. I'm not going to say a mistake. I also see a fungus bat up there. Which is going to be good. Please blow up before you... Po okay, cool. Just clearing down this little bit down here. It's going to drain past this torch, it seems. How I'm going to do this is I'm just going to dig into this, throw down a bomb, 
And there is a glowing mushroom biome here. I would have died there if it wasn't for uh, the summon. And you typically don't want to use these detonators because those cause a massive explosion. But if I can, like, just get in range and explode it. Yep, we just get a ton of lead from that and we can mine the rest of this lead. I'm doing this so I can heal a little bit before exploring the mushrooms. Uh, what you want from the mushroom biome is glowing mushroom. I do see there's a pretty big amethyst vein down here, so I will get, be getting that. So you want glowing mushroom seeds, you want uh, a lot of just glowing mushroom stuff. I see there's even more silk down there, silk down there, but I'm not going to be getting all of that right now. I do see that there is sapphires here. I'm a sucker for sapphires. I'm going to grab them. I don't need this detonator, so I'm just going to put this back here. Oh, by the way, if you land on a detonator, it also triggers it. Just warning you guys about that because uh, I have fallen onto detonators before and it's not fun. Because it looks like the entrance is up here. And there's a demon, uh, crimson heart there, which means we're right underneath the crimson. Yep. The reason why we want glowing mushroom seeds is so we can actually have glowing mushrooms. I shall use the hunter potion that will show me the location of enemies. And we did get some glowing mushroom seeds, which is good. We want more because we do want to make a glowing mushroom farm. But it should be fine because we can just go in here. It seems like the Crimson Hut just completely has us surrounded. I'm going to quickly see if there's anything under this glowing mushroom biome because maybe there's more mushroom biome under the mushroom biome. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem like it. There is a life crystal. We go down more. There's a marble biome, which is fairly important to know where it is, kind of. This is a good biome to locate. Let's see if we can locate the entrance as well. We have located the entrance, but we have also located quite a few enemies. Medusas will spawn here in hard mode. Uh, ow. Hoplites will spawn their pre-hard mode using the hot, the item's hotlight drop. Can be very useful for ranged players because it's a throwing thing. I'm just going to teleport back, throw this in the thing, and we still need more Flinks Fur. So I think I will be back once I've gotten the rest of the Flinks Fur. But before you do anything, what you want to do is make one Ruby Gem Coin. Then you want to put everything else in the chest. I will short sort these. We also got a uh, Shark Statue, which we're going to be adding to our Statue Farm. And yeah, otherwise I'll see you when I have the things to see you then. So, this is a nymph, everyone. You do want to kill these in your world. Um, they just kind of appear. They're called a lost girl when you first find them. Uh, they do do a lot of damage and they are mini boss. So, you kind of just want to, like, juke around them, attack them, summons make it a lot easier. 
and just when you finish killing them, you get an item called a Meadow Detector. So accidentally just almost threw away. It detects the most valuable ore around you, which does include life pistols and it does include chests. I don't know where that chest is, but I will detonate this detonator. Just for this tungsten, I'll keep going looking around for things. See you then. Well, gosh, that took so long to get the proper amount of things for. Uh, Flinxes will give. Also, as you can see, I did die. Um, Flinxes do take a little while to. I might do a ta compilation of me dying. But Flinxes do take a bit to spawn and a bit to do other things like that. So let me just quickly see how much of that I can do. And I'm gonna grab my salt and my slush. And real quickly, I am going to convert that back into a platform. Go to the gold bars and make a ton of that. Go to the flinks for a coat. Grab that and you're just going to want to use this in place of one of your armor slots. This doesn't actually look bad. Uh, but for summoners, you want the flinks for a coat no matter what. Just because it allows you an extra summon. Now, there is an NPC that you typically want as a summoner if you're going pure summoning, known as the Zoologist. It's this fox lady. Uh, the big thing she will sell you is a whip that does summon damage. Though, if you don't want to be a pure summoner, it doesn't really matter, and you can just use a weapon from one of the other classes as you wait for your whips. Anyways, so I did get this. This is called an extractinator, and you can use silt and slush on it to get a ton of resources. And as you see, I'm getting a ton of resources like bars, ores. You can also get gems from this. See, I just got an emerald from it. Diamond, that's pretty good. Um so this next boss i think we're i think we're gonna do um i think we're gonna do the uh king slime and then i'm gonna show you how to grow a gem grow and make a gem tree farm after we've done that we'll probably make another farm or something maybe do some more exploration and then after that, we'll do that. We will jump very quickly to die of Cthulhu, and then explore past the crimson, including exploring the crimson. Also, using slash and silk also gets you quite a bit of money. It can also get you ores that you can't normally find in your world. So it can get you platinum. It can get you iron when it's lead wood and so on. We got 11 gold from that though. We are wanting to make four summons. We do want the slime. I guess I'll keep this on me. Actually, I can just put in the gears chest. Before the, our next video though, I will get everything together for the boss. So I'll get all of the accessories and items you're going to want. But I kind of have all of them right now. I mean, I'll put them on my inventory. Yeah. Then you want to go over here and make as many gold bars as you can. Then you want to go and make as many crowns as you can. 
after you make the crowns you want to put the ores away if you have any extra go to a crimson altar the easiest way to find a crimson altar is going into the if so i already know what one is but i'm gonna show off how to get to a crimson altar if you don't know where any is but you do know where your evil biome is if you know where your evil biome is just come into this evil biome don't have your recall selected because i'll send you back to your base um by the way, the die trader, I haven't gone over him yet. He sells the die vat. Then he also just sells uh, two different types of die. You can trade strange strain, plants with him later on to get different other dies. He just ha gives you dies for vanity, basically. So these enemies will be doing a lot of damage to you, so be careful of that. I'd recommend just keep moving, never like stop in one place for too long. We also have cactus here because this is a desert version. And I see I can get in over here. There is some palm wood here, but does this turn into palm wood or is this this is shade wood, got it. This will be cactus though, because cactus technically isn't a tree type. So it won't be considered a tree type. And if you're wondering, yeah, the crimson does have spiders in it. If you have a corruption world, you won't have any of the spiders, but if you keep going down into this hole, we will eventually find a ton of crimson altars. There's one there, but then you always find a room like this. If you have a corruption at the very bottom of the trench, you'll find them. And then you just go over here and craft as many of these as you want. We're just having four. And that's all we're going to do for this episode. I'm going to put these away, put the cactus in the natural blocks. Put the gel away and yeah we i will prepare for next time you should also grab um some cooked fish if you have some archery potions or something you can bring that though it's not necessary and i will see you next episode pancakers please like and subscribe if you like this type of content ring that bell notification to stay up to date with my most recent videos and have a great day bye bye